Good morning. Today's Mass will be offered for Bill Schroeder. Entrance and front. The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Spirit of God dwelling within us. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning nice to see you. Let us take a moment of silence and ask God to forgive our sins when we celebrate today Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit to us. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life and the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth is the people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church and every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites. 
inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. From your celestial home, shed a ray of light divine. Come, Father of the poor. Come, source of all our store. Come within our bosoms shine. You of comforters the best. You the soul's most welcome guest. Sweet refreshment here below. In our labor, rest most sweet. Grateful coolness in the heat. Solace in the midst of woe. O most blessed light divine, shine within these hearts of yours, and our inmost being fill. Where you are not, we have not. Nothing good in deed or thought, nothing free from taint of ill. Heal our wounds, our strength renew. On our dryness, pour your dew. Wash the stains of guilt away, bend the stubborn heart and will. Melt the flows of the frozen, warm the chill. Guide the steps that go astray, on the faithful who adore, and you confess evermore. In your sevenfold gift descend, give them virtue's sure reward. Give them your salvation, Lord. Give them joys that never end. Amen. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear family, welcome to St. Pat. I'm so glad to see you here again. So happy. Today we have more people than last weekend. Thank you for joining us, either because you are here in church or you are watching us through YouTube channel today. After I have taken my, off my mask, you can see my big, big smile. I'm so glad to see you here. Um, this means I'm so happy and it's a happiness in my heart that I can celebrate this beautiful mystery with each one of you. If we see the church today, we do, right? Uh, we can see here red color. And this is red. And we use red in the liturgy to commemorate uh, not only uh, the martyrdom, people who have died, or the saints who died, but also represents the fire of the Holy Spirit, which is the vestment here today, is red. And we see two banners with a dove, which tells us that is the Holy Spirit. So that gives us an idea what we are celebrating today. We celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. The name of Pentecost means 50 days after Jesus' death and resurrection. We will start again tomorrow, ordinary time, with green color. But today is a feast when we can reflect on the work of the Holy Spirit who sanctifies us. You know, it's not about Pentecost. But Pentecost is also known as the birth of the church. Because as we heard in the first reading, the apostles worked to preach the gospel after they received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came to them. And they were, the people were hearing the apostles speaking on his own language. The gospel today of John gives us four actions of Jesus doing. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. First action. The second, Jesus showed them his end and his side. The third, Jesus sent the apostles out. And the fourth, and my favorite, Jesus breathed on them and said, and said Receive the Holy Spirit. When I, when I was reflecting about Jesus breathed on them, I was having the beautiful image when God created us in the book of Genesis. God breathed on Adam and gave him life. Now, Jesus is doing something beautiful, giving to the apostles and today us the divine life, the supernatural life that we can go to heaven. He breathed on the apostles and today we ask him to breathe on us, receive the Holy Spirit. But how do we know that we have the Holy Spirit? How do we know that the Holy Spirit is in our lives? When I was a teenager, oh, a boy, 11, 12, 14, I don't remember, my mom took me to a charismatic prayer. And you have been there, you know, they sometimes scream out aloud and with music, sound, and I was afraid, and I said, I don't want to go there again. Take me to church. But that was the way how they pray. And my mom said, that is fine. That is how people pray now. So I always had the question, how do I know that I have the Holy Spirit? 
How do I know that the Holy Spirit is speaking to me? So during this year, this is the question I asked Jesus. Jesus, I want to see the Holy Spirit. I want to feel the Holy Spirit. Show me, it. help me how the Holy Spirit is working in my life. And the first thing I need to say is that our sanctification doesn't depend on us. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. And on that, to be holy, that I want to be holy because I can pray to Mary Novenas, I can go to Mass every single day. Uh, we need to be careful with that because sanctification is a gift of the Holy Spirit. And receive that gift, we need to be so humble. Means that we do not deserve it. That we feel so bad, like how we are receiving this gift if I am a sinner. That means to be humble. And this is the gift of the Holy Spirit, to be humble. So I was reading during Easter time a book called uh, Receiving the Holy Spirit. And there was a late man who, went, who was looking for a spiritual director. And he asked the same question to his spiritual director. How do I receive the Holy Spirit? His spiritual director said, that is a good question. Because receiving the Holy Spirit is... The goal that every single Christian needs to have in his life. And we can accomplish that world to birth. And he gave this beautiful example. If you are sick, or if you are in good shape, if you are in the hospital, or an airplane, or in the car, all the places, kids, things, all people, Everyone can pray at all the places. So when we pray, we have power to connect with God. We have power to talk with Him and listen to Him. Everyone is able to pray, no matter if we are sinners. So when we have committed any sin, we are able to pray. It's not amazing the gift of the Holy Spirit in us that doesn't matter where we are, and how our state and spiritual life will be, we are able to pray. So the layman say, like, how do I know that the Holy Spirit is in my life? And the spiritual director, let us call the Holy Spirit. Let us say, God sent the Holy Spirit upon us as you sent the Holy Spirit in, on the apostles. So this person starts to feel in a beautiful, silent peace. Joy, he feels that a heat in his heart, and he smells a beautiful perfume. Then the spiritual director say, There are signs of the Holy Spirit. You know, something that we can see clearly on the Holy Spirit that whatever he is taking to us or telling to us is always to be constant. Do this, do this. You need to go there. You need to achieve this goal. So the Holy Spirit, one of the points that has, is He's always going to tell us the same goal or the same plans that God has for us. So we call that repetitions. God speaks one time, and then He speaks again on the same point, using different words, different image. But the repetition of the Holy Spirit is always the same. This is a beautiful sign how we know that the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. And the second is the Holy Spirit brings us peace. The devil can do too many things against us, but the devil cannot give us peace. He doesn't have the power. The devil doesn't have the power to give us the peace. Only the Holy Spirit. So when the reputation comes and we feel peace, we know, by the second point, that the Holy Spirit is working in us. It's there. It's there. Third, obedience. God tells us some things. He gives us the peace and He invites us to obey Him. It's so hard, really. So difficult to obey sometimes God. But He is there. Hey, do it. You can do it. You can do it. And we can see Mary, our mom, 
Mother Mary, how she obeyed the God. When she received the message, she, she obeyed Him. So obedience is important for us. How the Holy Spirit works in us is amazing. I can see that He has been working in each one of you. The Holy Spirit has been working in me. Years ago, I was on a spiritual retreat. In that moment, when you're on retreat, sometimes at the beginning of the retreat, you say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to pray seven holy hours, and I'm going to do the session of the cross. I'm going to read too many books. I'm going to do this and that. Too many things, really. In one moment, when I saw my spiritual director say, no, stop. Don't do anything. I was so sad, like, but I want to do something for my salvation. And he said, you know, salvation is a gift. It open your heart to the Holy Spirit. You don't believe this. By the end of retreat, one of my holy hours, I went to the Blessed Sacrament. I kneel, and then I sit on the floor. And I was watching the most friends, you know, the, the Blessed Sacrament, and I said, Jesus, I want to see you, but I'm no, I'm a sinner. But I, I want to see you. And I started to close my eyes. And I closed my eyes, and then I started to feel something in my heart. Really, I promise you, that was something beautiful. I started to feel like my heart was going so fast. Uh, and I said, oh my goodness, I'm going to have a heart attack now. You know, away from my, city, from my family, uh, I, I need to call the ambulance. But then, there was a beautiful moment of peace, like I wasn't afraid. And, and, and I feel like something was going on, a small heat in, in my side there. And like, oh, that was a beautiful gift. What happened, I'm a scared guy. You can scare me so easy, so simple. I'm a scared guy. So if you invite me, uh, you know, let us go to the forest at one in the morning, I say, thank you. I will pray here at one in the morning. I don't go, I'm scared to darkness. And it's like, oh, maybe God is giving me the gift that I can, you know, overcome that uh, difficulties in my life. Praying more about the, the experience, doing the repetitions, that was the moment when the Holy Spirit came to my life. And I didn't realize at the moment, I found out this Easter time when I was praying, when I tried to meditate more and more and more on that experience. If you have experience of peace, if you have experienced that God is speaking to you the same, the same, asking the same. If God invites you to be obedient, if God gives us joy when we pray, I promise you that it's the Holy Spirit who is working in our lives. As we see in the apostles today, we need to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, prepare us to be holy. This is a beautiful way to get to heaven. Holy Spirit prevents us with His grace to be close outside from the world, but being close to Jesus. Holy Spirit protects us. He does. He protects the church. He's one of us. He's there. And the beautiful sentence uh, that the Holy Spirit is protecting us. Uh, one of my friends on, on a Zoom call last week, he gave us, I asked her, what the Holy Spirit for you? And she said, He's my protector. And really, He is. When we see the church, when we see our soul, how many times the Holy Spirit protects us? All the times. It's amazing. It's awesome. So open the heart to the Holy Spirit. There is no better gift on earth of heaven than receiving the Holy Spirit. And this is a gift for us, the promise of Jesus. It's not beautiful. The world can offer work, money, and status, but the world cannot offer the gift of sanctification. That's the gift of the Holy Spirit. We have the gift here in our hands. We need to use it. We need to allow the gift to work in our lives. As we should pray this week, come Holy Spirit, come to my life. Make your home in my heart today and every day. Amen.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. All things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, through God from through God, God and way, from the sense of the Father. Through him all things were made. And for us men and for us salvation and kingdom from him. And by the Holy Spirit, God and the Virgin Mary, we came in. For us, for his wisdom, for all the repentance of spirit, we serve the Lord and the Lord. He brought us again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to the heaven and the city of the right hand of the Father. We come here in glory to judge the Lord of the earth. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Father, and the Son. I confess one more to the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and I look forward to come. Amen. Trusting in God, let us present to Him our petitions. For Pope Francis and all church leaders, may God help them bear fruit according to their own gifts given by the Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For deep leaders of nations, may the Holy Spirit give them discerning hearts to know His will and the courage to follow. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the troubled areas in our world, and especially for those suffering from the coronavirus and all of their families, for all health care responders and those who minister and care for them, may they know God's grace and may it descend upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For those of us gathered here, may the outpouring of the gifts of the Holy Spirit sanctify us and transform us for the good of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have died. May they rejoice forever in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those prayers and intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Bill Schrader, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, receive our petitions and grant them according to your holy will. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become a spiritual drink. Thank you. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mysteries of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal miseries to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. The same Spirit as the Church came to birth opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth and professions of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelical host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created, rightly gives your praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to the desert, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim that a professor of resurrection. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblations of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed, you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, 
and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, St. Patrick and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession and your presence we rely for unfeeling help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, the order our Bishop, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, and your compassionate and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, be kind and meetings to your kingdom, that will hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestowed on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sins and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Land of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke of the marvels of God. Hallelujah.
Let us pray. O God, who bestowed heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon earth may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Please uh, remember to leave the kneelers down uh, that we can uh, hence an attack after Mass. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace and glorify the Lord by our lives. Thank you.